G'day everyone, I'm Reese, and welcome to my home reviews. By the way, do you like the new intro? I'm thinking about keeping it. Nah, that'll never catch on. <sighs> Critic. Anyway, in today's episode, I'll be talking about a very certain film based on a book that inspired this- Oh, by the way, there's a tornado outside the house. <laughs> This is Australia for crying out loud! We don't get tornadoes! <laughs> oh, I get it! It was here to get rid of something, not take it away! That's a very odd thing for a tornado to do. After the former head of Disney finally acquired the rights to the Muppets in 2004, their popularity seems to have slowly become unpopular. This was during a time when the Muppets weren't gaining much recognition as they once were after the 90s ended. And this film could have been the reason for all that, titled The Muppets Wizard of Oz, released on TV 2005. This was not only Disney's first attempt of trying to make a Muppet movie on their own, but it was the last project the Jim Henson Company ever worked on. Not only that, this is the first Muppet movie to ever get poor reception from critics and audiences alike. But we'll go look over today to see why the Rainbow Connection comes in to connect with the Land of Oz itself. So let's pop this disc in and watch The Muppets Wizard of Oz. The film opens up not in black and white, as we see Dorothy Gale, played by Ashanti, is singing a song on how she wants to get out of Kansas and become a singer. Mm -hmm. I gotta get out of here. Dorothy, I gotta get out of here. I really need to get out of this Muppet movie so I can actually have a good career. What is up? Uncle Henry, what do you think of my outfit? You look like one of them girls in a rap video. <laughs> you look like one of those singers who have a number one hit, throw a tantrum, and then quit show business altogether. So one of the problems that people say about this movie is that it's trying to tell a modern version of the original book. Like instead of Dorothy working at a farm, she works at a diner. Now there's nothing wrong with that, there's plenty of examples of a good modern adaptations over the years. But for this, it doesn't seem to work. Especially with the amount of pop culture references which I don't think kids will understand unless they know it. Afterwards, she heads over to the bus stop where the Muppets are there looking for stars for their tour show. Who'd have thought it'd be so hard to find an all-American girl with talent? Yeah! How do the producers of Girls Gone Wild do it? Yeah, that's another problem with this movie. It's the humor. Most of the jokes in this movie either have an okay laugh or just not funny. As it's trying to be like what Muppet Christmas Carol and Treasure Island did with its humor, but here it's a bit off. Almost like there's just one piece of the puzzle they're missing. Now I can't blame Lisa or Brian Henson for this. I'm sure they were trying their best to make this the last ever Muppet project they ever work on. Well I think the real reason why this film is lacking of funniness is because of the studio notes they were sent by. Because look who made this all together. Three different companies! No wonder this film is all over the place. Anyway, he gives Kermit her demo CD, but not before Miss Piggy shuts the door and drives off, having Dorothy to return home to her boring life. As she has a talk with Toto, her pet prawn, yeah, you know who that's going to be later on, as her aunt and uncle walk in to have a little family talk. How about this? When this blows over, we will go to the karaoke bar and buffet. Sing, girl! Don't you guys get it? I don't want to sing karaoke in some little Kansas restaurant. I want an exciting life. I want to go somewhere where I can see a concert or, or take dance lessons. Hey, if you're not going to sing somewhere over the rainbow, I shall do it myself. Just as soon as I get a mask. Somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, come on! Why must YouTube's copyright system always have to ruin the fun? So a siren goes off as everyone is heading for shelter because of tornado hit in the area. But Dorothy forgot to bring Toto as she heads back to the house. Which honestly it's a bad idea because if there's a natural disaster you should never go back unless something bad happened. Oh! Too late! You're already screwed! After a rough crash landing, Dorothy looks all around for Toto until she noticed that the prawn is now a bit bigger and can talk as well. You're all big! And you're talking! See? 
But more importantly, I'm negro guy. <laughs> Wait, no. Huh? Hey, it's all right. He's only got fur. At least he doesn't have the naughty bits of a human would have. They climb out of the house to find they arrived in a strange town called Munchkiland, which is run by rats, one of them being Rizzo the Rat. They explain that thanks to their falling house, the Wicked Witch of the East is presumably dead. It looks like with enough strength, the Wicked Witch of the East, played by Miss Piggy, lifts up the house. For about five seconds. Okay, now she's dead! <laughs> Hooray for murderer, I guess? Just after that, the good witch of the north arrives on the scene. And is also played by Miss Piggy. Okay. It actually turns out that all the witches in the land are identical sisters, and they used to be in a band, but split up now. And if you think that's a bit strange, just listen to Dorothy's poor excuse on why she wants to return home. Well, because... Anna and... Well. I just think that this was literally an outtake and they must have slipped this into the film by accident. Talk about embarrassment. The good witch tells Dorothy that she can go visit the Wizard of Oz to grant any wish she wanted. So she gave her the silver slippers and sends them on her way by following the yellow brick road. But with one final warning. Whatever you do, avoid the west. My other evil sister rules there and if she finds out you have the silver shoes, she'll hunt you down and prime off your cold dead carcass. What? <laughs> Why are you just not telling me this? We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You know, it's strange that they don't use this song, considering the fact they've done it before, back in the 80s. Anyway, as the two travelled along the road, they come across a scarecrow in a cornfield, played by Kermit the Frog. You know, we're on our way to meet the Wizard of Oz, and yeah. he's going to make me a superstar singer. Yeah. And if he can do that, I bet he can give you a brain. If I had a brain, I, I wouldn't be stupid. And if I wasn't stupid, I'd, I'd be able to do something important. If I only had a brain. After Scarecrow joins the team, they continue on their journey till they come across a network building where they see a deactivated robot in a chair. Maybe we should press this restart button. Oh! Welcome to the Total Intelligence Network. Where we help to make your internet even more slower. The Tin Man, played by Gonzo the Great, explains that he used to be a normal weirdo and was going to marry his love Camilla until the evil witch turned him into a robot because they have no heart. That's actually sad if you ask me. Dorothy says that the wizard can give him a heart as he gradually accepts but not before getting his no cell phone. While leading up to this inappropriate joke. Uh, uh, wait, wait a second. That's your cell phone? Yeah. Interesting. Hey, what do these do? <laughs> Nothing. They're my nipples. <laughs> oh, crikey, this is so wrong. As the gang walk through the dark woods, they come across the cowardly lion, played by Fuzzy the Bear, who, unlike in the book where he's just afraid, here he has a bit of stage fright from telling his jokes. We all have our issues. But we're working them out. Yeah. Together. Right. I mean, what are friends for? Where my brain should... They start to sing about how they have each other on this adventure. And I have to admit, the songs of this are not bad. They're just not as rememberable as the other Muppet projects. It's not that they're bad songs or anything, but a few of these feel forgettable. And even this number playing right now feels like it was originally meant for Sesame Street or Fraggle Rock, but they ended up putting it into here instead. <sighs> well, anyway. As they continue on their journey, they come across a very deep gorge, and the only way to get across is by walking carefully on the log while ignoring the two Kadeo critics, played by Statler and Waldorf. Each character crosses the log safely except for the Cowley Lion. Oh, I'm going out. You know, that was a very sweet moment of the Tin Man helping the Cowley Lions across the wooden log. It's generally sweet. I wonder what's next on our journey. Oh. Happy Fields? Well, it's only the coolest club in Oz, baby. So it's a club now instead of a long-grown field. You know what? It doesn't matter. We're still getting through this. 
Just as they sat down, both Light and Dorothy have gone heavily to sleep, which has been caused by the effect of the poppy flowers. It doesn't seem to work on Scarecrow and the Tin Man, as they go back outside to call in the rats to help their problem out. Munchkins, fall in! We got a girl to say. Sergeant Bubba. They brought them out carefully as the Tin Man proceeds to wake them up by giving them an electric shock, which it works. Quickly after that, they finally arrived at Emerald City. There inside, they are met by the wizard assistant, played by Scooter, as they are instructed by him and Dr. Bunsen Honeydew to wear protection glasses so their eyes won't have to fry when they're meeting the wizard. They also tell Dorothy that she should have a makeover before entering in. You know, if this was a horror film, she would be dead by entering that machine. After everyone admiring her new look, the group enters in to speak to the wizard one at a time, and every time the wizard changes his appearance, which is actually taken from the original book. For there, the cowardly lion meets a dragon, the scarecrow sees a ball of fire, and the tin man encounters a hot lady. Are you sure there isn't anything else I could do you for? No, no, no. You see, I already have a girlfriend. She's a chicken. Does she have a big beak? Like this. How do you know? And does she have huge floppy wings? Like this? Oh, look at the size of those wings. I've just come here to, to get a. Uh, uh, is it hot in here or is it just me? This is rated G! How can I allow this in? So as Gonzo falls through the trap door, <laughs> while also screaming like Goofy, Dorothy has her turn talking to the wizard, as his appearance is now an ogre's head. He tells her that she can get what she wanted only if she gets the Wicked Witch of the West's magic eye. So the crew set off on a journey to grab the eye from the witch, but unfortunately for our heroes, as the camera flies through the cast. <laughs> oh, 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 oh man! <laughs> for two hours and five, these are not good effects! <laughs> The Wicked Witch discovers them in Dorothy's shiny shoes and calls upon her henchmen. Round up the flying monkeys! There's only room for one diva in Oz, and that's moi! Dun, dun, dun. Oh, perfect! I was about to use the dun 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 sound effect, and now you've gone ahead and spoiled my fun! The Witch and her flying monkeys set out on their flying motorcycles while also changing to the song Ride of the Valkyries. Because why not? as she finally meets Dorothy and demands her to give the shoes to her. But Dorothy denies it. Capture the girl and the furball! I'm in the mood for lion nuggets. As for the others, shred them to pieces! But why? They've done nothing to you! Why? I'll tell you why. In a song. Hit it! So the witch starts to sing a song number that she's in the house, as the lyrics say, and it's averagely alright. It's not a great villain song, but it does its job fine. But then the music suddenly goes hard rock and this happens! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! A horrible horrible potatoes! This is a very gruesome depiction of tearing the scarecrow straw out of its body! It almost looks like something out of a horror film! And if that wasn't disturbing enough, we get this long pull-out camera shot of the Tin Man and the Scarecrow's body laying down on the floor looking dead. How traumatic can this film get? Well, uh, what, a, what an awful, awful thing to see. At her castle, the witch prepares to cut Dorothy's feet so she can wear the silver slippers while also recording the event on video. Why? Who would watch this? Uh, anyway, the lion, meanwhile, is trapped in a cage as the flying monkeys beat him for a laugh. But with some courage, he has a sneaky idea on how to get out of here by doing a magic trick. Now, everybody, close your eyes and put your hands on the floor. Yeah. Now, say the magic words. Owa, tafu, am four times. Owa, tafu, am. Owa, tafu, Second, he's escaped! He manages to stop the saw in the nick of time as one of the witch's henchmen proceeds to hurt him. Pepe calls in the munchkins to unchain them both, but the witch grabs Wizzle, and just when she was about to fry them to death, she gets hit by Dorothy's shoe. 
Wait, what would the shoe would do? It just literally gives you a buff, nothing else. And you couldn't pick that up afterwards, but you don't for unexplained reasons. And then, just as Wait, what the hell? Which, bam! Blow out fight. What's happening? Why have we suddenly gone into a Family Guy cutaway gag? Because we have Quinn and Tarantino talking to Kermit, acting out the scene on how Dorothy attacks the Wicked Witch. And it's like the crew filmed this for the behind the scenes documentary, but accidentally slipped this into the movie. It's so random! And just when Kermit accepts Quinta's idea of kicking the witch in the face, yes! hey! it just jumps right back into the movie. It's really weird. She lands in her bathtub filled with normal water instead of bottled water like she was told to be bathed with. But then again, water is water. We ever get for the taps or the ocean? Everybody's got tap water! And, in a funny way, instead of melting to death, she gets skinny to death. And nuts. No! Well, I definitely didn't expect that to happen. Dorothy grabs the witch's eye from the tub, the flying monkeys have their freedom again, which, like in the book, they could have rebelled any time. And they go back to where the Scarecrow and the Tin Man have been torn apart to put them back together. Oh, so they are alive! I just thought they were dead since you showed me that image that was Skull Kids for life! They arrive back at Emerald City to talk to the wizard, but they discover the whole area was just built on special effects, and the wizard is really... Jeffrey Tambor? From Muppets from Space? Did you ever tell anyone you weren't a wizard? No, you know, one of the secrets of show business, you gotta give them what they want, you know. Then give us what we want. Yeah, and, and explain how you turn into such a sexy chicken. <laughs> Here's a look on his face that just says, Dude, you have a serious problem with chickens. To make it up to them, he does grant each of their wishes on a live television show. The lion gets a golden microphone, the tin man gets a magnet heart, the scarecrow fills his head full of bran flakes for a brain, and even Dorothy gets a chance to sing. But ultimately admits that this is all bullshit. I'm sorry, but this whole thing is a lie. It's no different than those fake green glasses in Emerald City. Or that applause machine. Ooh. And my friends here are just made out of film material, including that uh, alien. Is that canon? The wizard tells Dorothy that she has to see the Witch of the South in order to get home. So they go all the way back to Munchkinland for a transition shot, or else we would be here all day and meets her near food stand. She tells Dorothy that the only way to get home is by tapping her shoes three times. So she gives the hat to the monkey, which makes him captain now, and says goodbye to her friends. I love you guys. I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you either. She taps her shoes three times and arrives back at Kansas in one piece. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, this wasn't a dream. She actually went to Oz. Yeah, I didn't think I'd mention it before because I thought it would be pointless. Dorothy reunites with her aunt and uncle with, surprisingly, Kermit. He explains that after listening to her demo, he gradually requests that she should be on the show with them. Dorothy sadly denies it since she just got back home, but her aunt wants Dorothy to go on. If you want to go on tour and sing, I want you to go. Because now I know you always be home with us no matter where you are. You mean it? <laughs> so I guess the message of the film is home is wherever you want to be instead of no place like home. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, it's a fine moral, but you could have used a bit more work on it. So the film ends with Dorothy singing on the show with the Muppets while her aunt and uncle, along with some of the Muppet performances here, watching it on the telly. All that's missing now is for Stadler and Wardoff to stay. Now that I've seen everything, good, can we leave? And that is the end of the Muppets Wizard of Oz. And it's not the worst Wizard of Oz adaptation, but it is the weakest Muppet film. While there are some good parts of the film, like the puppetry is always pretty good, and there's a few decent jokes that give a little chuckle, but aside from that, the film fails to attempt on doing an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz in a Muppet way of things, and the way the story structures and its humour lacking at times, I can see why people were not too happy about this. Heck, I bet that's the reason why it's not on Disney+. Plus. If you're curious to check it out for yourself, you can go ahead and try. But I wouldn't recommend to those who want a definitive version of The Wizard of Oz, or for those who want to watch a great Muppet movie. So in total, this film gets a 4 out of 10 score.
Thank you for watching today's review. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. That was terrible! Horrendous! I'm offended! I'm appalled! So what are we gonna do? Oh, what else? Email it to everybody we know! Good idea.